In this problem, we're trying to find the force upward on each side of a table. And we're given the mass of the table and the length of it. And we have also the location of a cat that is not standing at the center. So I think that's going to make it so the force exerted upward on the right-hand side is greater than on the left-hand side. One point about this that you can ignore is that, like, obviously tables don't just have two legs. But the force I'm computing here would be split evenly between the two legs on this side and the two legs on this side. So we don't have to worry about that. Just find the total force exerted upward on the left and on the right. So one of the critical skills here is to realize that to find the torque exerted by a force, you can translate that force until the lever arm becomes perpendicular. And I made a video to explain how this works. I'll just post a link real quick. Okay, so the way I'm going to start is by identifying a rotation axis to analyze torque. And I want to make it so the torque exerted by one of the forces disappears. And I'm going to choose this rotation axis and call it rotation axis number one. And FA is pointing right at that. So there is no perpendicular component. And the torque exerted by FA with respect to that axis must be zero. So that's out of the equations. Then I need to get the torque exerted by gravity on the table itself. And that happens at the center of mass. So we may as well just compute it in the diagram. That's going to be mass of the table times g, 15 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. And for that, I get 147 newtons. OK, then the cat is, is obviously not a point mass. It's standing on four legs. Well, the way I drew it, it looks like it's standing on three legs, but it's supposed to be four. We're just going to kind of take the average of where all the paws are and just say the force is exerted downward right there. And I was given a distance on that. It's 1.6 meters from the left end of the table. So that's going to be the mass of the cat times g. That's 8 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. And that one comes out to 78.4 newtons. Now, what's this business about translating force vectors? The issue is that force B, so the force upward on this table leg by the floor, if I attempted to use... The lever arm right there, I would have to go all the way to here. And I would have to find an angle between the force vector and the lever arm. And I would have to find the length of the lever arm. And all of that is unnecessary once you know how to translate force vectors. So the bottom line is, all I have to do is shift this force vector until it becomes perpendicular to the lever arm. And that happens right at the tabletop. And I will get exactly the same torque value by shifting it there and saying that that force has been exerted through a lever arm of 1.8 meters. So let's do the torque analysis with respect to rotation axis 1. The net torque must be 0, and that means the sum of all the clockwise torques better be equal to the sum of all the counterclockwise torques. And I have two clockwise torques with respect to that rotation axis. I have gravity pulling on the center of mass of the table, and I have gravity pulling on the cat. So my clockwise torques are going to be 147 newtons, that's for the mass of the table, times 0 0.9 meters, that's the distance from the center of the table to the left end. Plus for the cat, I have 78.4 newtons exerted through a lever arm of 1.6 meters. That has to be equal to the sum of all the counterclockwise torques. And, well, it's FB that's providing that. And that's our unknown. So I have FB acting through a distance of 1.8 meters. I can crunch all that in my calculator and find the upward force on the right legs of the table. And that comes out to 143.2 newtons. Now, I traditionally just round everything to three sig figs. So I'm going to call it 143 newtons. So how are we going to nail down FA? Well, the kind of symmetric approach to it would be to just do a torque analysis around the other side. Uh, an alternative approach here would be to use the net force in the y direction and insist that that's equal to zero. And I'm just going to go ahead and do that as a check on our work at the very end. So again, it's critical that you realize you can just translate a force. You just keep its direction and magnitude, and you just move it until it becomes perpendicular to the lever arm. So it changes nothing about the torque to just relocate FA up to that corner. Now I'm going to do the torque analysis about rotation axis 2. And of course, 
if you add up all the clockwise torques, you should get the same number as all the counterclockwise torques. And now with respect to rotation axis 2, it looks like FA is exerting a clockwise torque. And so I have FA exerted through a lever arm of 1.8 meters. And then I have gravity pulling at the center of mass exerting a counterclockwise torque. So that's 147 newtons at a distance of 0.9 meters from the right end of the table. And I have a second counterclockwise torque exerted by the cat and that's 78.4 newtons. And then I have to do a little math to figure out how far is the cat from the end. Well, the table is 1.8 meters long. The cat's at 1.6 from the left end, so it's at 0 0.2 meters from the right end. I crunch it all in my calculator, and I find FA. And I get 82.2 newtons for that. Okay, so the problem is solved but I didn't want to waste the opportunity to check my work here and to illustrate another equation of static equilibrium. So if, if an object is in static equilibrium, it can't be rotating, and that's what we used in our analysis here around two different rotation axes, but it also can't be accelerating, which means the net force on the object must be zero. So if I investigate my vertical forces, and again, I'm, just, I'm using this equation of static equilibrium, the sum of all the forces in the y direction must be zero, that means all the upward forces on the table must be equal to all the downward forces on the table. And that means FA plus FB better be equal to the force of gravity downward on the table plus the force of gravity downward on the cat. We could have used that equation to find FA after we had already found FB. I just decided to go for a more symmetric approach. So now we're just checking that each side of this equation turns out the same. So I have on the left 143 plus 82.2 for the two forces. I want to know, is that equal to the force of gravity on the table, 147, plus the force of gravity on the cat, 78.4. And when I add these up, I get 225.2 newtons on the left side and 225 four on the right hand side a very small difference that you can attribute to just rounding error along the way so it looks good i'm confident we have the right answer for our forces